Have you ever had a weird audio issue with your podcast that just didn't make sense? Today, I'm sharing the long overdue follow-up to a podcaster's question about why an episode sounded fine in headphones, but not through the phone speaker. What's happening, podcasters? This is episode 93 of 1000 Podcasters, and I'm Brian Ensminger. I'm a podcaster and a podcast editor, and I want to see you be successful with your podcast. If you'd like to make sure that you get this delivered directly to your favorite podcast app, visit toptieraudio.com slash subscribe. There you'll find three big buttons, one for Spotify, one for Apple, one for Google. Click the one that you prefer, or I've got some other smaller buttons if you prefer other apps. You can subscribe right there. That's toptieraudio.com slash subscribe. This is a combination video and podcast episode because there is a visual element to this. So if you want to watch the video, check the episode notes for the link to that. If you'd like to find the podcast episode so you can listen on the go, check the link for that as well. So a few months ago, I shared a little bit about an audio question or an audio issue that I'd been able to help someone troubleshoot on Facebook. There was another podcaster and she had a problem. And when I mentioned that, I mentioned that I might come back and share exactly what was happening, why it happened, and how to fix it. The The problem is <laughs> I forgot to come back and share that. So I'm going to do that today because someone reached out to me and said, hey, I never saw that follow-up episode and I'd like to see what was going on. So here's the scenario. This podcaster finished and published her episode. Everything sounded good in her headphones. It was her and I think one guest, something like that. Everything sounded fine in the headphones. Everything sounded fine on the computer speakers. But then people started contacting her to let her know that they couldn't hear one of the participants. There were like minutes of silence in this particular episode. So one person was talking, then where the other person was supposed to be, nothing. So she went back first and said, okay, let's make sure that everything's in the original recording. Everything looked fine. So she, then she went and took a look at the final file to make sure that there was not a bunch of silence. And she saw waveforms everywhere. So she hadn't muted anything. Everything was in the final file, just like she expected. And it all looked fine. But then when she popped it onto her phone to listen through the phone speaker, she couldn't hear that person either. So it really had her scratching her head. Now, if you can go ahead and if you can guess what happened, share that in the comments of the episode notes. Otherwise, let's get into this because this is about to get a little bit nerdy today. I've got some examples for you. And before I get to the examples, I want to show you visually what we're going to do. And then I'm going to give an actual demonstration of what happened. I struggled a little bit with the best way to do this, the best direction to go, if you will. This is what I settled on. I hope that it's right, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I've got a little bit of uh, connection or a little bit of presentation here. And so what we're talking about, what it came down to was the difference that a plug can make. The, the And it's balance versus stereo. So if you're an audio engineer, you probably already know where we're headed. If you're not, this is going to be good information for you. So what I did is I wanted to show this particular connector right here, you probably think of this as a stereo plug. This is what you would see on the end of a pair of headphones that you would plug in. Now, I'm not talking about the ones that you plug into your phone that have a microphone built in. This is like your regular old headphones like what I'm wearing right now. And this is the connector type is called a TRS or a tip ring seal or tip ring sleeve rather. And that has to do with the three different pieces. So if you can see on the picture, if you're watching the video, there are two little black bands, if you will. Those are insulation that separate the three different parts of this connector. This connector is the same connector that we use for stereo stuff like what we're going to talk about. It is also the kind of connector that professional audio gear uses when they're connecting what's called a balanced signal or a balanced connection. So we're going to go through that and we're going to show, ex I'm going to show you exactly what was happening with this particular thing. Then I'm going to give you the demonstration. Okay. So when we look at this for stereo use, this sends two channels and a ground. So you've got a left, a right, and a ground. You've got three different connection points. They're the same three we just looked at. One carries the left signal, one carries the right signal, one carries the ground. Okay, makes sense so far? When we're using it for a balanced connection, it's only carrying one channel's audio, but it's using all three connections. And the way this works is one of the connections carries the what's called the positive signal, one of them carries the negative signal, which is exactly the same as the positive, but it's negative. So it's the opposite. And then it carries the ground. So three connections, but one channel. And this is how the balanced is used. And the, the way this works is when the signal is sent 
over the, the wire, if you will, that channel is converted to two signals. It's one, one original signal, and it's got one signal that's a positive and the other one that's the same thing but negative. And this is done to reduce noise when you're running cables for long distances because there can be interference and stuff like that. So they do this to reduce that. And then when the signal arrives to the interface or however you're connecting it, one of those signals is converted back so that they're no longer canceling each other out. It's the same idea as if you were adding one and negative one together. If you don't, count, if you don't convert one of them back to positive, then you're going to just have zero. That's the sum of one and negative one. This is what it would look like for balanced use. So you've got your original signal, and then you've got one of them that is that signal just the way it was, and the other one is the signal inverted. And it's not a perfect inversion because my graphic skills are not super great. So this is the example of how that signal is sent. And then when it's received, it looks the same way, but then it's converted back so you have a single signal, right? So that's just how standard professional audio gear that's running a balanced signal works. The challenge comes when we cross the two types. So you have, if you have a stereo connection, you have a right and a left and a ground. The ground is the same, so that's great. But then the positive and negative, you've got a, the right goes positive, the left goes negative, and it get, can get a little bit weird when you plug a true stereo signal into a balanced mono signal, mono being just one channel, okay? And the example of that would then be if we send a mono signal. So we have just the one signal. It's just two of the same, right? So if you're recording, let's say you plugged in your microphone to an interface and it sends a stereo signal to your computer. You look at the final recording. You've got two channels exactly the same. That would be like what this is. But then when that arrives to a converter, an interface, or something that's expecting a balanced mono signal, it's going to take one of those signals and invert it because it thinks that's what it's supposed to do. Now, it's not really thinking, but that's, that's what it's designed to do is to invert that. And the net result is instead of, instead of getting the signal like you would expect, you get nothing because the sum of one and negative one or two and negative two is zero. And so there's no signal there. And that then what, what happens then is that left and the right of the same thing, when they're decoded as a mono balance signal, causes what's called phase cancellation, or in this case, it's just, it's electrical cancellation, it's the, the exact opposite signal. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that. I've got a session open in Hindenburg with just a sample recording I made of a, a tongue twister. I'm going to go ahead and play that for you. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? A woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could and chuck And as it turns wood. out, I can't hear that, but I hope that you could. So I played that signal, and now I'm going to do something. I've got the Sheps Omni channel on this. One of the cool things about this plugin is it has a phase inversion, but I can do it on just one side or the other. And so I'm going to go ahead and invert the phase on this on just one channel. I'm just going to invert the right. And if you're listening in the headphones, you're probably going to start to sound a little bit weird, but you'll still be able to hear everything. If you're listening on your phone speakers right now, you might be looking forward to about 10 seconds of silence. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play on that and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Now, if you're watching the video, you're going to see that the meters are still moving, but you're not getting anything. All right. Now, for those of you that were are listening on headphones or speakers, it sounded weird, but you're not missing anything. So what I'm going to go ahead and do then is do one final example for you. I'm going to export this as a mono file. So I'm just going to hit export. And instead of exporting it as a stereo file, let's see, I've got to find my folder first. Instead of exporting it as a stereo file, I'm going to export it as a mono file. And when I bring it back in, you'll see that we have absolutely no signal in the final file. Let me, oops, got to navigate there. For those of you that are not watching along, you get to, get to hear me talk. So you see that I've exported this, and when I brought it back in, there was absolutely no signal. The reason for that is because one of the two channels was inverted. And in the example that we were talking about with this podcaster, one of the participants had a microphone or a, an output that was a stereo output plugged into a balanced connection. And so that inversion was happening there. When she was mixing, she was listening to headphones. So just like those of you that were listening on headphones, it sounded a bit weird, but you could hear it. 
when she published it, she saw a waveform there because she wasn't publishing a mono file. She was publishing stereo. But when she listened back or when people listened back with just one speaker, those two signals, the right and the left, were out of phase with each other. And it caused that cancellation, which caused one of the voices to disappear. So that's what happened. A little bit geeky, a little bit nerdy. I hope I didn't lose you on this one. And for those of you that did know what was going on, make sure that you let me know in the, in the comments. And if you have any other questions about this kind of thing, I would love to hear from you. If there's any part of this that I made confusing, because this is a little bit technical, I would love to hear from you. Now, if you found this valuable, I'd really appreciate it if you would take a minute to share this with somebody else that you think might benefit this, because I want other people to have this kind of knowledge as well. And your email, your note, your call, your link, whatever it is that you do might be what saves some other podcaster from pulling out their hair because of something like this. If you'd like to connect with me or subscribe to the show, toptieraudio.com is the place for all of that. That's where you can suggest a topic to be covered, set up a consultation, talk to me about editing a show for you. All of that stuff is at toptieraudio.com. In fact, I even have a way for you to send a voice submission. So if you'd like to ask a question in your own voice, and believe me, I would love to hear your sultry voice on my show, go ahead and do that. Episode notes are at toptieraudio.com slash 93, also linked um, linked up in the show notes. So if you'd like to find that out, toptieraudio.com slash 93. Thanks for listening and watching. Now go out there and make a great podcast.